Have you ever wondered why some relationships end in divorce, but others don't? The answer may be a lot simpler than you may think. In this episode of the Anger Secrets podcast, you'll learn about four key relationship behaviors that end in divorce, as well as the antidotes to these behaviors, so that you can create the calm, happy, and loving relationship you want to have. Hello and welcome to episode 45 of the Anger Secrets podcast. I'm Alistair Dews, and over the last 30 years, I've taught over 15,000 men and women how to control their anger, master their emotions, and create calmer, happier, and more respectful relationships. In this podcast, I share practical strategies and real-life stories to help you control your anger, master your emotions, and create calmer, happier relationships. For free support on your anger management journey, including free training and the opportunity to book a free 20-minute anger assessment call with me, visit my website, angersecrets.com. I look forward to talking with you. Now, let's jump into today's episode, Relationship Behaviors That Lead to Divorce. In today's fast-paced world, many couples struggle to maintain a healthy and happy marriage. In fact, the divorce rate in most Western countries is estimated to be around 40 to 50%. So, why do so many marriages fail? According to renowned relationship expert Dr. John Gottman, four key relationship behaviors often lead to divorce. Gottman calls these behaviors the four horsemen of the apocalypse. In this episode, I will discuss these four behaviors and provide practical tips on how to avoid them in your own relationship. So, what are the four relationship behaviors that often lead to divorce? Behavior 1. Criticism The first behavior is criticism. Criticism occurs when one partner attempts to attack the other person's personality or character, rather than simply expressing a complaint about a particular behavior. For example, if you were to say to your partner, you are so irresponsible, you never get anything done on time, this is an example of criticism. Although criticism is common in relationships, it is damaging because it creates an atmosphere of resentment and negativity. Behavior 2. Contempt The second horseman of the apocalypse is contempt. Contempt occurs when one partner belittles or insults the other partner, often in a sarcastic or condescending tone. An example of contempt is saying something like, you are such an idiot for not understanding that simple concept, or I can't believe you are so dumb. Contempt is particularly damaging in a relationship because it communicates that one partner views themselves as superior to the other creating a feeling of resentment and disconnection. Behavior 3. Defensiveness The third horseman of the apocalypse is defensiveness. Defensiveness occurs when one partner responds to criticism or complaints by denying responsibility, making excuses, or blaming the other person. For example, if your partner says, you didn't clean up after dinner, and you respond, it's not my fault, you were the one who left the dishes out. This is an example of defensiveness. Defensiveness makes it difficult for couples to resolve their issues since each partner is unwilling to take responsibility for their mistakes or bad behavior. Behavior 4. Stonewalling The final horseman of the apocalypse is stonewalling. Stonewalling occurs when one partner shuts down and withdraws from the conversation, often in response to criticism or contempt. For example, if your partner says something insulting and you respond by walking away or refusing to talk, this is an example of stonewalling. Stonewalling damages relationships because it creates feelings of loneliness and disconnection, making it difficult for couples to resolve their issues. To summarize then, the four horsemen of the apocalypse are criticism, contempt, defensiveness, and stonewalling. If you notice yourself use any of these behaviors in your relationship, it is time to change them. But what are the antidotes to these behaviors? Starting with criticism, the antidote to criticism 
is to express your feelings in a direct but non-confrontational way. For example, instead of saying to your partner, you are so irresponsible, you could say, I'm feeling frustrated because I need you to be more reliable when it comes to picking up the children on time. By expressing your feelings directly but non-confrontationally, you will be more likely to get the response you want from your partner. Moving on to contempt, the antidote to contempt is to cultivate an atmosphere of appreciation in your relationship. This means paying attention to and recognizing the positive things that your partner does every day. It also means expressing gratitude for all the good things in life and complimenting your partner when they do something nice. Thirdly, the antidote to defensiveness is to take responsibility for your mistakes and apologize for them if necessary. By owning up to your mistakes, you show your partner that you are capable of self-reflection and growth, which will help create a more harmonious and happy relationship. Finally, the antidote to stonewalling is to practice what I call self-soothing. Self-soothing involves using calming techniques such as deep breathing or practicing positive self-talk to reduce your stress levels and then engaging in a constructive dialogue with your partner. By practicing the antidotes to the four horsemen, expressing your feelings in a direct but non-confrontational way, cultivating an atmosphere of appreciation, taking responsibility for your mistakes, and practicing self-soothing, you will be well on your way to creating a healthier, happier, and more loving relationship. Okay, that's all for today's episode, Relationship Behaviours That Lead to Divorce. If you found this episode helpful, please follow this podcast, head to your favorite podcast app, and leave a rating and review. This will help other people struggling with anger find and benefit from the show. Remember, for free support on your anger management journey, including free training and the opportunity to book a free 20-minute anger assessment call with me, visit my website, angersecrets.com. I look forward to helping you control your anger once and for all. And finally, remember, you can't control other people, but you can control yourself. I'll see you in the next episode. Take care. The Anger Secrets Podcast is for general informational purposes only and does not constitute the practice of counseling, psychotherapy, or any other professional health service. No therapeutic relationship is implied or created by this podcast. If you have mental health concerns of any type, please seek out the help of a local mental health professional.